Hello and welcome everyone to today's video tutorial about um, DQL, Dynatrices DQL. My name is Milos and I'm happy to be your host today. Okay, DQL, Dynatrices Query Language. What is it? What, 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 where, where can it use? Where can it be used and what can it be used for? Uh, those are the main points that we want to target today and I have also prepared a few examples. Um, let us start here with the common starting point with the public documentation. You can find it here when you go to the home page and um, put a platform and then um, put a Grail section, you will find everything related to Grail. What is Grail? Grail is a storage solution. Storage solution where pretty much everything what you can see in Dynatrix is stored. Logs, metrics, traces, um, events, these events, also entities like hosts and processes and services. Um, all of that is um, stored in Grail and can be queried with DQL in a very SQL-like way. Um, the, so very powerful query language. And um, yeah, the basics of it should be, should be pretty easily transferable as it is really not, not complicated. Um, let us start with where can we do that? Where can we test all of this? In your Dynatrix environment. Um, if you go to your Dynatrix environment, um, you can first of all check this in the logs and events section or you search here for logs and events. Of course, uh, here we can only do it for logs and events. And if you open logs and events, then you will most probably be greeted by this screen here, which is the same. Uh, the body here contains the same information as it did in the previous Dynatrix UI platform. In the new Dynatrix platform, you can switch here to the advanced mode and filter here with DQL. In this case, here we are fetching the logs and we are sorting here by timestamp time step and descending. Of course, this application here is limited only to logs and events. DQL can do much more. Um, we can also meet DQL in the dashboard application allowing us here to create, to query uh, data from Grail with DQL and to create here nice visualizations and charts um, in form of dashboard. Very similar to this, the new application workflows, allowing us to make here um, autom automations and workflows based on DQL. Um, if DQL, if value provided by DQL larger than 100 or below 30, um, I want to have an alert and then uh, forward it via email, for example, to this and that team. So just here one use case. Um, dashboards and metrics deserve their own video. I just covered them that they exist here. Um, where else can we see DQL? We can query DQL also via API. Um, I will just show you real quick where you can find it. Searching here for API should allow us to open the Dynatrace API Explorer. And in here we can select um, what definitions we want to use. And here the Grail DQL query definition is the right one where we can um, yeah, start a Grail query basically here. There is also a, an example and you can already see here, um, here we can define the query and a bit more information. The API, very powerful, can be used in script, but the same can also be done in the UI for quick ad hoc um, querying in the notebook set and this is also the focus of today's in the focus of today's video in combination with a few examples let's go to the notebooks app um as you can already see i have multiple notebooks some of them are private uh, for example here playground one other ones are shared as you can see with this icon here so let's create a new notebook for our video here um, okay, this is what the new notebook screen looks like. We can rename it or uh, download the JSON, making a copy or deleting it. Let's start here with renaming. Super plus Dynatrace. Um, yeah, um, it will be saved automatically and notebooks are the perfect tool for playing around, saving your queries, uh, testing them, uh, making quick ad hoc queries, and stuff that you like, stuff that works from here, you can easily transfer then to the dashboard.
um, here we could clear it. And we could here rerun the sections. So first of all, what are sections? Sections can be added with this plus icon, allowing us to create a new section based on what we want to do. If we want to query Rail, then we can create here the DQL section, which we will today do. And um, we can also add sections for code, JavaScript, for example, add and or markdown and queries. All, all three of them combined, depending on your needs. Today we will focus here on the Grail, the query Grail section. Um, this is what a section looks like. Um, we are greeted here. We can we can move uh, we can move with this button. We can run queries with this button. Of course, an error. Nothing is defined here. Um, we can use here the time frame selector. This is the same time frame selector that was available in the previous UI here in this part of the screen. So it works the same way. We have here a few templates where we can define our own. Um, we have here a few options. Let me let us first start here with a simple query. Fetch logs. Fetching here all our logs. Uh, now this button here makes sense where we can hide query. Especially interesting if your query spans here over multiple multiple lines. Um, with options, we can change the visualization type. Um, this is here the record list, but sometimes you maybe prefer here the raw view or the single value view, which for fetching logs maybe is not the best choice, but for fetching one particular value in a metric, for example. Or table view um, can also be can also be used very often. Let us stick today with the record list because we can use it here very nicely to show what's going on here. Um, okay, what else can we do here? Of course, just fetching here the logs is um, pretty straightforward, but we can also add filters. A filter contains, with contains, we can check what exists or what, if something is um, part of um, a specific field. In this case, I want to check if a string appears in the content field. Uh, let's actually copy here the line so that we can save here time. Um, basically, um, filtering only if the content contains here the source IP. Um, the content field, you can see it here, it is visible for every log, um, also with other fields, depending on the log, of course. So by, by applying this filter, we are filtering only if this string here is part of the content should result in a couple of uh, uh, records. It does. So somewhere here. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, let me actually do it like this. OK, source IP. Here it is, um, source IP. And here is the IP. Um, we could now. Uh, parse out the IP section so it appears in a in a in a separate field. So we just have the IP. For that I will copy the command here and explain it to save some time. Um, using here the parse command, we are parsing out of content. That's true. Content. And we are using the following syntax. LD allows us to pull data, to query data. So LD will start where content starts and it will go all the way until this, uh, it, met, it meets the string that I have defined here, which in this case is source IP. Then with this backslash here, we exclude the first quotation mark here. Then we have the colon. So I'm, I'm sampling here slowly. Then we have here the square bracket, and then another escape is required for escaping this quotation mark here, which is done by that. Everything that comes after this quotation mark here, where my mouse is currently, we want to store in a specific field. So this is what it did. Again, pulling the data with line data, storing it in a field which is called IP, until we meet the next quotation mark, which of course needs another escape. And um, this is correct. Here it is. So if you run the query, we have here the extracted field IP, which we extracted from content. Um, yeah, another step what we could do, we could, for example, make a simple summarize where we just um, basically summarize and count 
the IPs. Counting here all IPs by IP. So we can see, okay, in the last two hours, the following IP appeared uh, almost 191,000 uh, and a bit more times. This one here, 23,000 times and so on. We could also here define a sort if we would like. Sort uh, IP and here, for example, this time. Okay. Oh, okay. Now it is sorting here the, the IPs. Maybe we should sort here by count. Uh, okay. Uh, this is more, more what we wanted to see. <laughs> okay. Um, to another example. What else, do we, what else can we do? We can attach logs um, and apply a filter. Let us create here another stack. As you can see, you can, of course, run multiple um, queries um, in one note, note, notepad, notebook. Uh, maybe you now hide the query makes sense to save some space. Um, but for it, depending on your needs. What else can we do? Fetching logs. Instead of relying here on the time frame selector uh, at the top, I'm creating, um, creating one here in code, filtering again with contains if the process name matches the string, and here matching uh, values. Uh, with log level if error is in the log level all of those commands you can see in the you can see in the documentation as well in case you require additional information which i definitely would like would, would recommend copying here the rest of the query we are again parsing or let me actually comment this out this is how we can comment so that you can follow it step by step okay we have here some records we are parsing now out, so the filter worked. We are parsing here out, um, was not valid. Let me copy it and with Control F check where it appears. Okay, it appeared here. And we are obviously interested in the card number in a long format. Here is the card number and we are, we are converting it to long. Card number and here it is in long format. And the commas are inserted because it's in, in long format. Um, with the fields command, we can now, instead of seeing here everything which we're not too interested in, with the fields, we can only select the fields which we're interested in, which is the new field card number, content, and timestamp. Card number, content, and timestamp, and then already the next record starts. And here now, we can again play around with sort or filter some more, if filtering out basically the card numbers which are null, and summarizing the total count of card numbers. 786 in the last, or in this time frame actually here, in those in the time frame of the 22 hours. Okay, um, let us go to our next example, fetching events. Let me comment it out. So here we start the same fetching here the events, and we are only wanting those events which are marked as a problem. Um, in case you would like to match or to filter with additional filters, you could of course here, as we did here, two filters in a row in two separate lines or recombining them, them with and or or, of course this works. So if I would remove this, okay, if I would remove this, then this would be part of the active line. If we run this, and then here we see, um, the results. Um, for example, we see here um, that multiple uh, Davis event IDs were found for one particular event. Uh, maybe we would like to split. This is when we can use here the expand command, allowing us to allowing us to expand. Let me copy this part here, allowing us now. To have each and every ID, yes, here it is. Each and every ID um, on its own in the event. So instead of having um, all the events bunched together, let me remove it again. Bunched together with the expand command, we can have it here separately. Very powerful command which we can use in 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 many many occasions. 
Another example which I have prepared, it basically is a repetition of what we have discussed already. Um, okay, let, me, let us start slowly. I think the first three lines here are pretty clear. We did it now a couple of times already. Um, fetching here the logs again. Uh, doesn't matter. This, the same the same methodology would also work, of course, for events or, or any other uh, type. Um, some, some sort of filter here, filtering here if, if, if response time appears in content. And we're filtering here for a specific great same space. Again, parsing out um, in integer format the response time. So basically, here, what comes after response time, third bracket. Um, we are filtering out. Um, okay, let us run the query. What does it look like? Here it is. Response time is 49. Uh, parsing here. And now we could play around with this value. With the summarize, we can count in the field success only with the count if response time is below 75. All the other response time should be part of total. Here we go. Um, we could now trans uh, or convert this to double, allowing us um, division. Otherwise, with integer dividing would be uh, would not be possible correctly, would not be correct or properly. Um, so here we can now calculate success and total and the success rate, just dividing success by total. And if we enable here the field, then we only see the field which we're interested in, success rate. So pretty nice query for um, calculating here the success rate. Um, similar or another example, which we could use, also featuring the expand command, would be this one here. Query section. What do we do here? Um, here we now the first time are fetching um, entities together. Um, so if we only fetch here for host, then we can see, okay, um, if we fetch for the host, we see here the host name and we have here the host ID. Um, we can use relationship. This is related to the to and from relationships from the previous uh, UI um, in order to find now process groups or other entities running on this host. Um, there is a list of available um, commands that can be used here in the documentation. So let me use this opportunity to show you um, in Grail, or, or here in this section, Grail, a query monitored entities. And somewhere here could be a relationship mapping table where you can see all the possible relationships. For your specific entity, you could also, let me use this section here as we don't need it anymore. You could also use here the describe command. Describe, uh, let me copy it so I don't have to type it. And uh, here we can now see all the possible fields which could be part um, of the DTNT host, uh, of the DTNT host um, patch. And here we should also be able to find the possible relationships with figures. So as you can see, this list is pretty uh, pretty long here. It's run, run on and the relationship. Um, okay, what can we do with this information? Um, we can add in a new field, we can add the field um, with the process groups that are running, run on this entity. So let us run the query. And here, here are all the process groups running on this host, on this particular host. With the expand, repetition from what we have seen already, we can now um, feed specifically for each and every process group. So we basically split here, awaiting here those lists. Of course, this will result in more more records. Although if you, if you compare it here, we go back. Currently, we have here 73 records, as in we have 73 host in the last two hours, but if we expand, now we'll have here 1,000 or even more records. 1,000 is here the default limit to, to show um, to show here. Yeah, 
okay, for each and every process group we have here. And now we could also use the lookup command so that we um, get more data from those process groups. For example, we would be interested in getting here the process group um, name, for example. So how does this work? Um, with lookup, we are first, uh, we, we, can, we can fetch again. And here in this case, we are fetching the DNT the, the process group. And the source field is where we, what we see in our previous uh, in our previous fetch. So it is DT NC process group, which is um, here the ID. And if this if this field which contains this ID matches the field where we have the lookup in this table, then this is a match, and we get the results from the NC process group table as well. Um, in this case, um, for this ID, the following ID was found, resulting in, in this process group name. So you can check, because you need to know um, what the name of this field is, you can simply check. So let me just set it here. Indeed, it's called ID. This is why I know that in the lookup field, I can write ID to match uh, here our source field. And last but not least, I want to share here a time series command. Let's get rid of that, or let's create a new section. Um, again, using here the lookup, uh, let me comment here out a few things. Um, as you can see, time series, they do not start with fetch, nothing like fetch metrics. Um, why? Because here we can do in one line, but uh, if we would require fetch metrics, it would require multiple lines. Um, in case you're interested in the details, I would uh, likely refer you to the documentation, please. Um, this is stated there. Um, so first of all, for metrics, we start directly with time series. We call the new field, which we expect to use the CPU. And what we do, we want to average here the DTU, DT host CPU usage. And with buy, we can split by. If you're familiar with Data Explorer, this is the same functionality. We're splitting here for, for all the hosts. If you would remove here, then of course you would get here the average over all the over all the hosts. Um, okay, we have here again the host IDs, and we would likely and we would like to do now something what we did in the previous command. We want to have here the host names. We know in the host names, we can find here. We can find it here. If I query just, a, just the dfetch entity host, we have here the host names. So we can create here the lookup, fetching in the table where we know we have the information. The source field um, is the entity host because if I go here to record list, because um, so this is still the record list from the line one. Line two is not executed yet. Um, because in DTNC host, we have here the ID. And I know that in this table here, the ID is part of the ID field. So we can uh, look up here source and, and, and lookup field. Resulting in this result, host name is here. And again, here another, uh, the lookup ID and those two fields. Now we can add a new field or rename them. So instead of writing here lookup uh, entity name, we can just write host. Um, here we are storing the average CPU usage as an array. So this field here is stored as an array. And we are grabbing here another field, which we know it is available in the DTNT host. How do we know that this that the OS type is part of DTNT host? Um, we know because of describe. So OS type, I hope this works. I don't have to scroll. OK, not like this, unfortunately. Uh, in any case, it should be here somewhere. Somewhere here should be the OS type. Up, 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 up. Uh, OS services are here. OS type, there we go. It's a string. This is why I know that we can um, call it with lookup because here it is in the lookup. 
making it visible. And here it is. So we now here have only our Linux and Windows machines. With our addition next filter, we can filter out only for those which are on Linux. And we can add again new fields. If um, the average CPU usage um, is above 30, I want to have it marked as red, the status, and green if it's below 30. Here we go. And now we can just play around with it a bit more, removing some fields, sorting and limiting. Limit I have not yet shown. A limit allows us to, to, for example, if you fetch here a log, this, will, this is a very expensive query, but if we limit three or two, then of course we limit our records only to the, to the, to the provided limit here, enhancing um, moment of, of, of the query itself. Okay. Uh, I hope this was a nice, uh, nice introduction to what DQL can offer and where you can use it in Dynatrace. Um, hope to see you in a future session, in a future video. Thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out via your channel um, to Dynatrace, uh, live chat, for example. And have a nice day. Thank you very much.